Hello everybody and welcome back to another movie review. I'm Miranda with Caesar and we watched the Lego movie part two recently. Times have changed. You need to change with them. We have to be tough and battle ready. Look, a shooting star, make a wish. <gasps> What'd you think about it? I thought it was really good. Um, I really like the aesthetic of it. Obviously, you know, the, the Lego movie has really established itself as something that's visually amazing. There is some awkward dialogue here and there, but I would say that was pretty sparing. I think it was mainly for the kids. Yeah, I guess so. That's, that's the thing that is really good about this movie. There's a lot of things that are um, kind of subtly um, in place for adults, but there's, it's also very entertaining for children. Yeah, this is really a family movie. Kind of skipping ahead, but um, the Rex character, he had this really funny thing where it would be a montage of like all his different occupations and things yeah. like that. <laughs> and one of them was like, script doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but it had like an actual doctor yeah. office. It was almost to the point where I felt like it was a parent movie that like you could bring your kids to yeah. and they would still like it. Like it, it did feel like it was for adults almost. Which would be really good for parents to watch this because uh, then maybe they would see some of the things they're doing that aren't so great for their kids. It's just like, there was a really funny part where the guy, uh, the dad was saying like, oh, okay, get along. All right, I'm going to golf or, uh, see you later. <laughs> Lucy! Emmett! They took Lucy and the others. Hang on to your frogs, plan. Um, so before we talk a little bit more about what we thought about it, I guess we'll give a little brief synopsis of the plot. It takes place like immediately after uh, Lego Movie Part 1. Like it picks off right at the end. Yeah. And they're, like they're still in the middle of celebrating and being like, yay, we did it, everybody. We're all friends and we're all special now. But then an alien of like babies? Yeah, it's So really like funny. it really implies that it's like a, a like little a sister. sister. But like little babies toys and they kind of just destroy everything after like years of like battling yeah it says like five years pass and it cuts to like some other stuff happening yeah so they're like oh we have to make it all tough and cool and like no oh, yeah. cute things allowed the older brother is trying to make it like a mad max universe which i yeah. thought was really cool the way that they introduced that is just like the desolate kind of like very yellow and orange desert landscape and mm -hmm. like, they're like oh everything is like hardcore now and if you show your weakness you'll get eaten alive and things like that that was really fun i thought yeah i really like that aspect of it it was like if mel gibson was was chris pratt as a lego <laughs> It was a coming of age story. It's basically what this movie is for like the first arc. Or the main character from the first movie, Emmett, is still kind of like his like yeah, happy, he, cheery self. Yeah. That's a big point in the whole movie is that like he does not adapt. <laughs> He yeah. just keeps being like really upbeat all the time and he does it's almost like oblivious of everything he like physically puts on headphones and blocks his ears so that he can't hear yeah there's he, lots of really funny visual gags too in this movie a lot of like little subtle like one-liners like offhand comments that are also pretty funny it's very self-aware too like um they make fun of a lot of tropes when he's going to thrax and he's saying like oh i have a like a very disturbing backstory or like it's really sad and lengthy or something like that you don't want to hear about it it's like oh okay we don't have to talk about it if you don't want it so there i was yeah. he does that like twice i know there's like so many tropes that they smash i feel like they also like they do that a lot with the music too mm. the music is very on the nose yeah. i'm too busy partying <laughs> like the whole point of the lego movie is just kind of like kids playing with Legos and like this is how they're kind of solving their conflicts. It was established in the first movie that like that's kind of what's going on. Yeah, they're like externalizing their internal conflicts through the Legos. A lot of it did feel like it was just like kids playing, especially yeah. in the beginning <laughs> when the baby aliens came. Mm -hmm. And then they shot lasers at it, and then one of them's like, I eat lasers. And it's yeah. like, I, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's how kids play. They're just like, no, that doesn't hurt me because I have an invisible shield, actually. They do that so much. I love that. It was a lot of that kind of thing where they're just like extremely overpowered as, uh, whenever they say so. We kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, but like the main, main problem is that like the older brother and the younger sister don't play well together. Yeah, like their styles of imagination really um, are not compatible. Because mm -hmm. the guy is trying to be like, oh, I'm like a hardcore teenager now. And the girl's like, oh, I want everything to be cute and like rainbows and sparkly. Which if you like have a younger, older sibling, like you could kind of pick up on that. Mm -hmm. Like when I was little, my sister was five years younger than me. 
So she was like always like really little to me. Yeah. So playing with her was a little bit difficult. That was one of the things that I liked the most about this movie was like it was almost nostalgic in like how you play with like toys and how you kind of talk to like your older sister, or, like younger sister, or whatever. There was parts where I wanted to cry. Like I, I won't spoil the ending, but like they're having like a conversation and I was just like, oh. <laughs> I kind of felt the same way because I used to like play a lot more with my younger brother, but then I grew out of it really quickly because I was already nine years old when he was born. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's a pretty substantial generation gap there and like I grew out of like being able to genuinely go along with what he's into pretty quickly and like with my older brother too or just I guess and like cousins and things like that you know it's like well why don't you want to play this with me anymore and now I get it it's like oh well it's because it's like really dumb and boring when you're at that age I know but it's like so hard to tell kids that that's yeah. the thing you could be like a mom and say like oh they just want to play with you they just want to have fun but it's like it's really hard for kids to kind of grasp that concept that other kids aren't like at the same like level that like they are the developmental stage cause yeah because the guy was at the level he was like just trying really hard to be independent mm -hmm. you know? even though like if you left him alone he would instantly freak out yeah <laughs> but uh, still like there's that just nagging mentality of like no i have to be every i have to, I have do to be tough alone. yeah i have to be tough i have to do everything alone mm -hmm. and then the sister just like wants to play with him that's like the other thing like that i guess a lot of older kids don't realize is that they're the younger kids the younger siblings aren't trying to like be mean or like just mess it up on purpose like they genuinely want to play with you they just don't know how yet yeah i think that's another part of why it's good for parents to watch this and kind of maybe understand that oh instead yeah of just saying like why don't you guys just get along and, and just like locking the door and like <laughs> leaving them to their own devices <laughs> yeah you guys are gonna stay in there till you till you love each other but, but i guess it like makes sense because like that's just kind of how life is like you're always gonna be with people that you don't like necessarily agree with or get along with mm -hmm. but you have to like figure out like how can i at least tolerate this person yeah like <laughs> just enough so that we get whatever we need to get done done that's a pretty uh major message of the movie as well i mm -hmm. think that's like kind of the whole point of the ending cooperation and like collaboration it's really good to watch it together i think you'll be enjoying it but you'll be enjoying like different parts so like everybody kind of has like a fun thing to laugh at basically mm -hmm. if you're really into like the visuals of movies like i was a really big fan of how it looked it was amazing although like the use of colors was really well done like all the lighting was cool the animation itself was really good uh the voice acting was really good basically just all of it was really well done yeah there was a whole like like an army that made this movie oh, yeah the credits were incredible Incredibly long. Yeah. And there was a song too at the credits. They're like talking about the credits and they're like pointing out specific people sometimes. This movie's so self aware. It's really yeah. refreshing and nice. Yeah. And like kids don't really get that, you know, so I think that's much more for the like the people taking the kids to watch it or just like adults in general. But yeah, the whole thing's really well done, I think. I don't, I can't remember anything that I didn't really like besides some like sparse examples here and there of when the dialogue was kind of awkward. Yeah. And I thought it could have just gone without it. Like it could have just been silent or it should have been like an easy fix or something. Maybe like kids like that dialogue, you know? Maybe, but you know, like, that's maybe the only it wasn't thing. for us. I'm just kind of nitpicking. That's like the one thing I uh, could possibly say I didn't like about the movie. I'm General Mayhem. Bring me your fiercest leader, Lucy Emmett. So would you recommend this movie? I would definitely recommend it to everybody, especially um, for families. Yeah, like any younger people that you have. I would recommend it also like if you've ever had like an older or younger sister, like with the significant age gap, like it'll kind of give you back like those nostalgic memories and stuff of like playing with your your siblings. Uh, so what would you rate it overall? Um, overall, I'd probably give it I would probably say like an eight. It's I think you good. I think you enjoyed it a little bit more than I did, like slightly. Yeah. I would give it like a seven and a half. Like I said, just because like some of the parts were kind of awkward, but uh, overall I really like the movie. Who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. You're me when I'm late to school and I forgot my homework and my pants are made of pudding. No, I don't. Ha! Well, thank you guys so much for watching our review of The Lego Movie Part 2. There are going to be more reviews like this to come, so definitely stick around for that. We're going to be shooting for a schedule of at least one new episode a week. Uh, we're going to be watching movies quite regularly now, so um, look forward to that if you enjoyed this. And if you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe if you like this. Thank you guys so much.